Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to solve a few problems related to spheres. Uh, this lecture is part of the uh, advanced mathematic, mathematics course uh, on unizor.com. I suggest you actually to, uh, to use the website because it has a complete curriculum of this course and uh, every lecture has notes and then there are some exams, there is certain functionality related to the self-study, etc. Now, back to the problems related to spheres. Alright, I have four problems and let's just do one by one. They're not very difficult at all. Uh, but it's good exercise as far as um, uh, the volumes and the surface of the sphere is. Okay. Um, the first is extremely easy. Well, um, there are three planets which I would like to consider. Mars, Earth, and Jupiter. Well, they are not in the order of their distance from Sun, they are in the order of size. So I know <coughs> that diameter of Jupiter is 11 times greater than diameter of Earth and diameter of Earth is twice as big as diameter of Mars. So the question is how much bigger the surface and the volume of Jupiter are than that of Mars, considering that these planets are ideal spheres. Well, that's actually very easy. Since um, Earth is twice as big as Mars, and uh, Jupiter is 11 times bigger than, uh, as Earth. Um, diameter of Jupiter is 11 times 2 diameter of Mars, which is 22 diameter of Mars. Now, if diameter is 22 times greater, or radius is 22 times greater, that doesn't really matter. What happens with the surface area and the volume? Well, we know that the surface area is proportional to a square of the radius. Well, actually, it's 4 pi r squared, if you need the formula. But it doesn't really matter what the formula is in this case. What matters is that, obviously, the surface is proportional to r squared, or d squared diameter. It doesn't matter, right? So, if my diameter of Jupiter is 22 times greater than the diameter of Mars, then the area of Jupiter is 22 times, twi times 22, ten, 22 square, greater than the diameter of Mars, which is uh, uh, 484. Uh, sorry, not diameter. It should be the area, surface area, then surface area of Mars. Now, the volume of Jupiter, the formula again is 4, 3, pi r cubed. That's the volume um, expressed in terms of the radius. But again, what's important is that the volume is proportional to the third degree of the radius, or the third degree of diameter, right? So, that means that the volume of Jupiter is 22 cube volume of Mars, which is 10, 6, 40... Eight. So that's very important actually. You see, volume grows in uh, cubical proportion to the radius. So if you see the planet, for instance, and what you see is basically you see the diameter, and uh, another planet, let's say, is slightly bigger in diameter as you see it. Well, considering they are on the same distance. If it's maybe only twice as big, but its volume is eight times as big. And if you go back to Sun, for instance, Sun is uh, visible from the Earth at the same angle, basically, as, uh, as the Moon. Um, so they do look kind of the same, but considering that the difference to Sun is like 150 million and the difference uh, kilometers and the difference in difference to Moon is something like uh, less than 500,000 um, kilometers. So the difference in the lengths 
considering the angle is the same, implies the difference in diameter in certain number of times. And the, uh, the volume of the sound is, well, you have to cube that number, which is huge. And that's why Earth is still uh, uh, circling around, around the sun. So it doesn't really matter, it's, it's, it's really far, but it's really big. And that's why the, the gravitation, which is proportional to mass, and mass proportional to volume, that's why gravitation is so, so big. All right, anyway, it was just an exercise that the surface area of the, of this, uh, of the sphere is proportional to the square of the radius, and the volume is proportional to the uh, third degree of the radius, the cube. Simple. Okay. All other pro problems are as simple as this one, actually. So next one. Okay, we have a glass of water of cylindrical form. And it's filled up with water. Let's say to half of it. And the radius is R. Then we have a ball, metal ball, of the radius R, and we drop it in, into the glass. Well, otherwise we will not be able to drop it, right? So, the radius of the ball is less than the radius of the cylinder. The question is, um, by how much the level of water will rise if I will drop this ball? Okay, well, since it's metal, it goes completely down, right? So, the amount of water which it will um, push out would be equal to the volume of this sphere, which is pi four third pi r cube. That's the volume. Now, this volume is the volume of water which is supposed to be uh, pushed out by by this ball. In this case, it's actually pushed up. And um, now, my question is, by how much it will raise the height uh, of the water? So, now, this is a cylinder, because the water is rising in a cylindrical glass, so the amount of water which is above the previous level will be a cylinder. Its volume, the volume of the cylinder should be equal to, to this, because that's the volume of the ball, right? So, what's the volume of the cylinder? It's pi r square, the area of the, of the base, times h. Now, we don't know h, but we do know that these are equal to each other, right? So, from this, you can have that h is equal to 4 pi is reduced, uh, r cubed divided by 3 r squared. So that's the height of the water uh, coming up, rising up. Obviously, if r, capital R, is very big, then this h would be smaller. And if r, lowercase r, is getting greater, obviously, with a fixed um, radius of the cylinder, obviously this r will go, um, will, will, ra will, will increase. Well, now we can actually think about, depending on the existing height uh, of, the, uh, of the cylinder, of this glass, uh, how big the radius of the ball might be uh, to completely fill up the, the glass. But that's another problem. Just came up to me. Another easy one. All right, so that's my second problem. Next one is... Okay. Let's say um, you're playing with a rubber ball uh, filled with air. So there is a wall of rubber and inside the air is pumped. Well, air is actually weightless. We can just consider it's, it's weightless and disregard its weight. 
So it's only the rubber itself from which the ball is made has the weight. Now we dropped it into the water and uh, it's actually going down exactly by half. All right? So let's say we have the ball of radius r. That's what we know. And we also know that when it's dropped into the water, it goes down exactly half uh, its own uh, size. Now, my question is, I would like to calculate the width of the wall of this rubber ball. If I know that um, uh, the unit weight, the unit weight of the rubber is, of the rubber ball, let's say, is B, and uh, water is, well, W, let's say. Okay, now, I was actually thinking about this problem before, and uh, it's not very easy to find an exact solution without some kind of numerical um, uh, apparatus, but you can just basically make an equation which uh, uh, can be solved. Um, it's not easy to solve the cubical equation because it's supposed to be the volumes, so it would be r cubed somewhere. Uh, but anyway, if you will come up with an equation, at least, it's very easy to solve. Nowadays we have computers to solve equations if we cannot solve it in, uh, in a regular way. So, we have unit weights for the rubber ball and to the water. And we know that the radius of the ball is r, and it's floating uh, exactly half of it is underwater and half in another. Now, um, let's go back to physics a little bit. Uh, I think it's called the law of uh, Archimedes, um, which says that the weight of the floating object is equal to the weight of the water it displaced. So, how much water we displaced here? Well, the volume of the ball divided by 2, right? So, the volume is equal to 4 third PR cube, and we have to divide it by 2, so it would be 2 third PR cube. So, that's the amount of water which we have actually pushed out, displaced, so to speak. Now, if I will multiply it by the unit weight of the water, that would be the weight of that water, right? So this is the volume, this is the unit weight, so this is the weight of the water which we have displaced. Okay, now, what's the weight of the, um, of the ball? Well, that's basically the weight of the walls of this ball. This wall, these walls, the volume of these walls, is the difference in the volume uh, of the ball itself, uh, minus the volume of the air inside the wall, right? So, if we have x as the width of the wall, then the outer radius is r, and the inner radius, that's where the air is, would be r minus x, right? So, the difference in volumes would be, obviously, 4 third pi r cube minus r min minus x cube. So that's the difference in volume. And if I will multiply it by the unit weight of the rubber from which it's, the ball is made, that would be the weight of the material from which the ball is made. Again, considering that the, the, the air is weightless inside. And they must be equal. That's the law of Archimedes. Well, basically that's it. All we, have, we can do right now is just make a little simplification, 2 third pi, so this, 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 and you have only 2, 4 and 2, and that's the equation, 2 r cube minus r minus x cube b equals to r cube w. 
that's the equation from which we can find x and this is the third degree equation so unfortunately I cannot easily um, give you the formula I mean there is a formula of Cardano for the third degree equation but that's too much it's ba basically it's very simple to, to solve these equations numerically nowadays with computers so whenever you want to solve the problem like this first you have to come up with an equation and that's what required in this problem just come up with an equation no solution um, and then obviously you can solve it all right that's my third problem and the fourth one is coming next all right okay let's say you have a regular tetrahedron okay and inscribed into this tetrahedron tetra, te, tetra, tetrahedron is a sphere now inscribed it means it's tangential to each face now we have four faces and uh, the sphere is inside so it's somehow something like this it touches this 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 and the front now what I have to prove is that the radius of the sphere is equal to one quarter of the altitude of the tetrahedron all right how can I prove it that's not easy right but actually it is here is my suggestion let's take this center of the sphere and connect it with all uh, vertices one two three and four now, thereby, we are dividing our tetrahedron into one, two, three, four pyramids, right? Now, every pyramid has a, a volume equal to one-third surface area of the base times its height. But what's its height? If we connect this center with, uh, let's say, these three, so the bottom pyramid, what's the height of this? Well, that's the perpendicular. And this is, since we are talking about tangential sphere, well, it's very easy to prove that uh, the radius into the point of tangency is actually perpendicular. Well, to prove it is basically very easy. I mean, you can just cut the whole thing in, uh, with a plane and basically you'll reduce the problem to, uh, to a known uh, theorem that the radius to a tangent line um, is perpendicular to this line. That, that's very easy. Um, by the way, it's a good exercise actually for, for, for you if you want to. All right, so... Um, area of the base which is area of this triangle times the height and the height is the radius right now the same thing happens with other three pyramids the one on the right on the back and on the front all of them have since this is a regular tetrahedron all of them have exactly the same base which is a triangle uh, equilateral triangle actually and um, and the height, the, the, the altitude of this, of each of these pyramids is the radius from the center to a point of tangency. So, I have to multiply by 4 to get the volume of the entire tetrahedron. But on the other hand, the same volume is actually one-third S times H, where H, the, where, where S is the... Um, surface area of this triangle and h is the altitude well from which we see that 4r equals h where r is equal to one quarter h that's it um, I do suggest you to um, to go back to the unisor.com and 
uh, try to solve all these problems just by yourself. There are answers provided there. And um, uh, just as a good exercise, uh, and don't forget that basically the, um, the site contains lots of other material and it's good for self-study of an entire course of mathematics. Thank you very much and good luck.